is uh it's not gonna work out. Good call. Good morning. It is the 17th of November. I'm obviously not in my truck. Well, what's happening? Now let's let's talk about it. Okay, so some shit's changed. I mean, I'm not, I'm still working as the truck. I still work. I'm still waiting for my truck to get fixed. It's still not fixed. Um, let's talk about that real quick, and then I'll explain what this is. So basically, Friday of last week, the park was overnighted. Well, Thursday night it was overnighted to my job, the part that they, they said they needed. It was supposed to be there Friday. Now, it might, it might have been overnighted. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be there first thing in the morning. So they might have gotten it in the evening, so I'll give them the benefit of the, of the doubt there. Don't hear anything Friday. Of course, they don't work on the weekend, so Saturday, Sunday's a, a wash. Monday comes around, I contact my people, and they say that it's the wrong fucking part. I was supposed to give an answer on what I'm doing right now last Friday, but I figured my truck was gonna be ready, so I told them I couldn't do it. So, the part was wrong, which was a part that was on national back order. My boss found it, overpaid for it, shipped it over to them. They said that wasn't the right part. So now they got an item number. It's another part that's on national back order. And my boss found it again and is and overnighted that one there. I'll just be bringing back the other one that he overpaid for back with me when the truck's ready and I'll bring it back to Chicago and he'll, he'll give it back to the guy and get his money back. So that's great. But that doesn't help the fact that I have been down going on four weeks now and I haven't made any fucking money. None. I'm, I'm running out of money. I'm literally out of money. Again. I'm out of money again. This time because the truck's fucking broke down and I'm not getting any kind of fucking uh, breakdown pay. So usually a company is the minimum they would pay at least, or I would say even the maximum they would pay would be like $150 a day for, break, for breakdown. This isn't something that should have taken that long to fix. It literally is a hour to two hour job to fix this to fix this problem. And had we been able to get the truck up to Chicago, they could have got it fixed right away. But no, we've been down for almost four fucking weeks and I haven't made any money. So that's a problem. That's a big problem. So I'm having to do fucking side gigs and trying to find shit to make money. And it's not enough. So I am... I'm a couple weeks away from having a full two years of verifiable trucking experience, which is a bar that needs to be um, met, metaphorically, uh, before I'm consider considered hireable by a lot of other companies that would work with somebody with an accident on their record. So no matter what, I'm stuck. Because the jobs that would hire me right now with less than two years of experience aren't paying. Or they want me to drive out long. And I'm not doing that shit. I cherish my 10 hour breaks. I want to make sure that I have enough rest. If I got to drive two clocks to make what I'm making, doing what I'm doing right now, flatbed, or what I was doing before I stopped making money. I don't want any part of it. I don't want to have to work myself into the fucking ground to barely make what I'm making not doing that as a flat better. And I I think they're I think they're dry box though. So it's a lot of dropping hooks. So it's mostly you're driving basically you're driving like team clocks as a solo driver. And I don't know how they fucking do it, but a lot of companies do this shit. And then a lot of them are these like second chance style companies where you could have an accident or you could be a, a, a ex 
next con or something, and they would hire you, but you'd have to work your ass off. You'd have a job, but you'd have to really fucking work your ass off. So that was one of the stipulations was, if we needed you to drive a thousand miles in one day, would it, it was required, could you do it? I like, yeah, I could do it. Would I want to? No. Anybody could do it, but I'm, I don't want to do it. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be probably doing that today. I'll probably get a thousand miles in today on this thing. Maybe not that many. Definitely seven, seven eight hundred miles for sure. I'm not bound by the rules of trucking right now. I'm, I'm literally in a four wheeler. So I'm not doing that shit. I'm not doing that shit. So I'm looking if I'm gonna if I'm gonna move, it's gonna be for something that I want to move to do. If it's involving if it's involved with trucking, I've been seeing a lot of videos lately of uh, people complaining about the spot market and fuel is up. I'm looking at diesel prices now. Driving through, uh, I'm in uh, West Virginia now, and I'm driving on 81, and it was 6:30 a gallon up here for diesel number two. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I don't see any shortage of trucks on the road right now. There are trucks fucking everywhere. People are waiting in line for loads. They're like 10 trucks deep. Everybody's bidding on the same fucking load. These, these, these companies are able to push these products out for pennies. And people are taking it. And now everybody's struggling. Because they can drop the price. Fuel's up. Rates are down. Like, why are trucks still moving? I mean, I've been down for three weeks. I can tell you right now, it's not fun. It is not fun. So, yeah, let's talk about what I'm doing now, why I'm in this thing. I'm in a Sprinter van. I flew out to Boston yesterday, and I got, I met up with an old coworker of mine, and I picked this up from him, and I'm driving it back to Houston. It's got stuff like a mule, basically. You ever seen that movie Mule? My buddy was telling me about it, and I should watch it, but I haven't seen it yet. So basically, I'm hauling this 1,800 miles in this car. All expenses that I inquire on this trip are being paid. They got me a hotel last night to sleep in, so I have to sleep in the car. And, uh, and everything I spend while I'm doing this, they're gonna reimburse me for. You know, obviously, stuff that like I went to the store and got a monster and a Gatorade and some snacks I went to McDonald's and got some food um, uh, that's the problem though with this shit is uh, there's no adaptive cruise control on this thing so my ankle is dying it's very very dead right now so Anything I spend, I just got to send them a receipt and they will send me uh, basically the money back. They'll, they'll reimburse me that money. So, that's nice, right? And these are the, uh, these are the guys that I used to work with uh, at my old IT job. IT is a little different when you work not for a corporation but a very rich guy and you're working in a family office the family office environment is always real nice because you get perks and really the, the pay was great at the time and uh, the perks were even better I had a personal trainer they paid a gym membership for me I got to go to the gym every day uh, I got paid to work out to stay in shape they brought food once or twice a week, got a massage every week. They paid 100% of our medical insurance for me and my family, and they paid 100% of the dental and vision for me. I had to come out of pocket for dental and vision for the kids and uh, my ex at the time. Uh, so it was, it was very nice. But then COVID happened. Like I could have seen myself retiring at that place. They gave me a raise every year. I loved the people I worked with. Hell, I'm still talking to them now. I'm running this for them now. 
So we're like, we still have communication and stuff, and it's all going well. So I got, I'm in a Sprinter van, and I'm driving from Boston to Houston, and uh, in, a, in a Sprinter van, and they're paying me for that. All expenses paid while I'm doing it. So very nice. It's something because my current job isn't paying me shit, and I have to do something. I have to do something to make money, and this isn't even going to be enough to pay my rent. So it's basically going to be just what I what we need to survive, you know, because we're we're having to get groceries. The babies are eating more and more and more, and I haven't worked in almost four weeks, and I haven't gotten paid anything in those four weeks. And a lot of people are like, why don't you look for this job? Why don't you do that? Yeah, a lot of people would have just left and, and not did anything. But, you know, it's not for lack of trying. I have put my application out for places. I have tried to find places to work. But everywhere that calls me back or anybody that, if I even get a call back, it's people that are fucking desperate right now because this isn't the time of year for people to be getting hired. It's right before Christmas you th and Thanksgiving. You think that people are going to want to hire people that are going to want to take off immediately for Thanksgiving and Christmas? No, they want people that are just going to fucking run right through those holidays. It's a very difficult time of year to hire anybody for anything. So, the people that are hiring me are desperate, and they're the ones that are running outlaw. They want me to drive a thousand miles a fucking day. And, you know, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't make enough to even buy the drugs if I was even willing to do drugs to stay awake that fucking long. So, I'm not doing that shit. I, I can't do that. I cherish my 10 hour breaks. I like taking my 10 hour breaks. I like only having to be able to, only being able to drive 11 hours a day. I don't want to kill myself to get these loads delivered for a little extra change in my pocket. I'm a human, I'm not a fucking robot. And I'm getting older. So, I've been doing coding, online coding classes while I've been home. I'm thinking about jumping over to do uh, software engineering. I'm still young enough. I feel like I could, uh, I could still learn it. I'm 35 now. I still feel like I could learn it, uh, and it wouldn't be too difficult. I've already burned through a couple of couple of courses on Free Code Academy. It's it's a free website that teaches you how to code. Um, and I've made, you know, registration forms and HTML and CSS. And I've made uh, just a basic web page that allows you to share cat pictures and stuff. Just basic stuff, real basic. But um, that's all I've been able to do. And then, of course, I, I went and flew out and I grabbed this. And now I'm trying to get it back to Houston at a reasonable time. So I don't want to be driving all. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be driving. But oh, the quick rack, you know, I settled for a, a straight rate. The longer I'm out here, the more money I'm gonna spend because you know, eating shit like that, hotels and, and whatever. It's all gonna cost me money, and I'm running really low. So. Like really low. So this was something that definitely we needed for sure. I needed this. But anyways, yeah, that's that's basically it. That's the update. I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm about to get with my uh, the guys at my job to find out what the status is on the truck, and because I I probably won't be I won't be able to get on the truck again until Monday next week. And if it's still not fixed by Friday, then it's going to probably be a whole nother fucking week before I can even get the truck back. So, I don't know what I'm going to do, but December is my two years, and if the truck's not ready by then, I may, I may very well really try hard to find some company that will, that will fucking start paying me. Because I, I don't know how much longer I can, I, I, I couldn't last this fucking long without getting paid. I'm out here having to do fucking side gigs and put miles on my goddamn car because I'm not getting paid for breakdown, even though it's not my fault that the truck fucking broke down. I'm, I've been trying to not get mad about this because then I'll just piss myself off for nothing. Like, what am I going to fucking do? I'm stuck. I'm fucking stuck. For now. Remember, Jensen, ladies, love it, hate it, fucking ready to take care. I'll see you on the next time.